Hi, I'm Audrey Sue, and today I'll be talking about promoting health literacy in underserved communities. First, a little bit about me. I'm a rising senior from Skyline High School in Salt Lake City, Utah, and over the last two years, I've been volunteering at Molly Hay Free Clinic, treating the low income and uninsured. There, I first saw the need for greater health literacy. There's a lack of accessible information that promotes health awareness to the underserved. So, I founded Para to Salute, or For Your Health, a youth-led organization that promotes health literacy towards the underserved here in Utah. Let's start with a case study that shows health literacy through the lens of the social determinants of health. This is sourced from the Community Faces of Utah and tells the story of a 50-year-old woman who is low income and uninsured and had just moved to the U.S. from the Philippines. Soon after she arrived, she began experiencing a number of worrying symptoms, insomnia, mood swings, and weight gain that persisted for weeks to the point where she was having suicidal ideations. Luckily, a friend was able to point her to a local free clinic where she was then diagnosed with menopause. She had never heard of menopause before and thus didn't know to expect any of these worrying symptoms in her mid-40s to 50s. What this case study shows are the major barriers regarding the social determinants of health, low income, uninsured, unfamiliar to the US and its healthcare system. This then leads to low health literacy. She's not aware of issues such as menopause. This begs the question, how can we improve the health of the underserved through health literacy and these social determinants? Let's start by analyzing the social determinants of health or the complex factors and conditions that determine health outcomes. These start with socioeconomic factors, accounting for about 40% of your eventual health outcomes, and this involves things such as income and schooling. The next 10% is accounted for by physical environment, for example, safety. The underserved experience many barriers in regard to these two factors, and it can be incredibly difficult to surmount things like poverty or living in an unsafe neighborhood. So instead, we can focus on the remaining 50% of factors that determine health outcomes, namely health behaviors such as daily habits, diet, and exercise, and clinical care, namely access and quality to hospitals and clinics. Now, as mentioned before, challenges in the first two factors lead to poor health literacy, which is defined as the degree to which individuals can find, understand, and use information or services to make informed health decisions. The importance of health literacy is that everyone should have equal access to the information they need to identify medical issues early, stay conscious of their health, and pursue clinical care. Improving health literacy encourages better health behaviors and accessibility to clinical care, thus improving the remaining 50% of social determinants of health in the face of insurmountable barriers, such as those that involve the first two factors. There are many global disparities in health literacy. For example, in developing countries, you see less health literacy overall due to less widespread education, lower literacy rates, and less gender equality. For example, 80% of adults in Iran do not have sufficient health literacy, and unfortunately, these are mostly women with limited educations and lower socioeconomic status. For example, in countries in Central Asia, 73% of the illiterate population is female. On the other hand, in developed countries, we have greater health literacy due to more widespread education, higher literacy rates, and more gender equality. 70% of the adults in the Netherlands and 60% of adults in the U.S. have sufficient health literacy. But in the U.S., we still see major health literacy and health overall disparities today. The underserved have unequal access to health care and poorer health literacy. This is a result of a many complex challenges regarding these social determinants as mentioned prior. For example, in 2019, 66% of white workers were covered by employer-sponsored health insurance versus only 47% of black, 43% of Latino, and 37% of American Indian workers, showing how the U.S. healthcare system often discriminates against minorities. Today, 36% of Americans have basic or below basic health literacy, leading to issues such as greater complications, higher costs, and higher mortality. In fact, low health literacy is a huge burden on the U.S. healthcare system, estimated to cost over $100 billion a year. And in person, these health disparities can be exemplified by the questions that patients often ask their physicians. For example, about how to prevent diabetes, nutrition, why they should care about women's health and breast cancer screening, about where to get free and affordable healthcare, and if there are resources available to them in other languages, most commonly Spanish. There are many organizations around the world that are working towards addressing health inequity through health education. For example, the CDC, the Global Health Literacy Academy, and UNESCO. But in Utah, we don't have a lot of these great re resources, so I founded Power to Salute, or For Your Health. And again, it's a youth-led organization that promotes health literacy to Utah's underserved communities. 
Project Salute has four main branches, starting with an online magazine, as shown to the right. Here, we publish information on various issues prevalent in the underserved community in Utah, for example, regarding women's health awareness, nutrition, diabetes, etc. All our material is physician approved and available online in both Spanish and English. Then, from the information that we publish in our magazine, we turn that into brochures, and we've distributed about 200 of these to free clinics around Utah. These are also published online and available in Spanish and English, and this is what our brochures look like. And finally, we have a mental health initiative. We focus on youth suicide prevention, reducing the stigma surrounding mental health and suicide. And we've been invited to present at seven health fairs and community events, targeting diverse communities and the underserved. And finally, to make all that we do possible, we have partnerships with free clinics and community organizations throughout Utah. For my key takeaways, I want to emphasize that low health literacy is prevalent in underserved communities, driven by barriers regarding the social determinants of health. The factors behind these barriers can be incredibly complex, from poverty to safety to immigration. And because these factors are so complex, it's best to focus on things that we can control, such as health awareness and access and quality of clinical care through health literacy. Promoting health literacy tailored to specific communities can help mitigate these barriers so that no matter what background a person comes from, they have the information available to them to make informed decisions regarding their health whenever they need to. And students, of course, can play a huge part in improving health literacy for all. It can be really difficult to put yourself out there to connect with new people and community organizations, uh, but if you're interested in health, it can be really, really rewarding to work with your friends and talk about topics and write about topics that are important to you, such as women's health and mental health. Here are my references. And I'd like to acknowledge some people who really made Power to Salute possible, starting with Dr. Miner from Molly Hayfree Clinic. Uh, he approves all our material and has been incredibly supportive of us. Uh, Senora Johnson from the Skyline, uh, she's our club slash magazine advisor. And my friends and family and community organizations and clinics for partnering with us and helping us get all this together. And finally, the Global Health Leaders Conference at JHU.